Science Journal for Kids and Teens presents How Can We Prepare for Droughts? Adapted from the original peer-reviewed paper in the journal Earth's Future, published on June 29, 2020. Research conducted by John Nielsen Gammon, Jay Banner, Benjamin Cook, and others from the Department of Atmospheric Sciences at Texas A&M University, the Department of Geological Sciences at the University of Texas at Austin, and the NASA Goddard Institute for Space Studies, respectively. See the full list of authors in the accompanying PDF. Read by Miranda Wilson. Abstract. Droughts are common in many parts of the world, yet climate change has made them more severe and difficult to predict. This makes it harder for water suppliers to plan for the future. Currently, they use data from past droughts to make these decisions, but we think it's important to consider future changes as well. We analyzed drought projections for Texas, a large state in the USA with both wet and dry regions. They show that the conditions there will be even drier and hotter in the future. Water planning needs to adapt to these changes and take future climate change into account. Climate models would be very helpful for that. Introduction. Have you ever been thirsty with nothing around to drink? It's a problem, isn't it? Droughts are like that for everything. Plants and crops don't grow as much. Factories that use water have to cut back on what they make. Families have to decide how to get by with less water. Droughts occur when there is not enough rainfall for a long period of time. They harm farmers, ecosystems, and even businesses. Droughts are common in many parts of the world. They come and go in most climates, but in recent decades, climate change has changed droughts. It has made them more severe and also act differently. But why is it important to know what future droughts will be like? If you get a notice you will be out of water for the day, you prepare for it. You can store some water for drinking or save bath water to reuse in the toilet. The same goes for your water suppliers. They collect surface water and store them in reservoirs, or pump them from aquifers. When they expect droughts, they store more water or ask people to use water more efficiently. Many suppliers plan years ahead for new reservoirs or plants to make clean water from aquifers. Due to climate change, the risk of drought is changing. So how can people plan and manage their water supply for future droughts? This is what we wanted to find out. Here is an image showing a dried up watering hole, or stock tank, during the 2011 Texas drought. Beyond the cattle, there is smoke from a wildfire over 50 miles away. Methods. First, we analyze climate factors in Texas, a very good place to study because it rains a lot to the east and very little to the west. We looked at changes from a long time ago using speleothems in caves and tree rings. It was easier to get data for recent years from modern climate records. Past changes can help us predict future ones. We also took into account that the amount of rainfall is not the only reason for droughts. Higher temperatures make droughts worse. Another important factor is how fast the water leaves the soil. People's increasing needs have an impact as well. Next, we look through existing drought projections for Texas. These try to predict future conditions based on climate change. The models look at what will happen if people don't take any action against climate change. They also consider the outcome if people do take steps to reduce global warming. We then combined all these data to see how it could help these important groups. Number one, farmers, and number two, water suppliers. For the curious, Water in the soil can move into groundwater more quickly or more slowly, depending on its conditions. Soil water can also move up into the atmosphere, whether through plants or evaporation. Results. Older data show that Texas was a lot wetter 10,000 years ago, after the last ice age. Later, there were many droughts in Texas. Some of them lasted for a decade or longer. These are called mega droughts. More recently, temperatures have kept increasing since 1975. Climate projections show temperatures continuing to increase. Some of them also suggest less rainfall in the future. 
In the second half of the 21st century, most models predict Texas will be a lot drier. Figure 1. We measure changes in drought using three different methods. These are the results from West Texas. When the index for climate conditions drops below negative 2, it means that conditions in a typical future year will be like conditions in a past drought year. In the graph, you can see the y-axis represents the climate conditions, while the x-axis represents time in years. The vertical white line indicates the year 2020, which was the year the study was conducted. All areas in gray represent drought conditions. The three different lines represent the three different methods of determining climate conditions. Looking at the graph, can you determine what climate conditions will be like in the next 80 years? Discussion. Climate projections show that Texas will get even drier and hotter in the 21st century. This is because climate change will lead to higher temperatures and make rainfall less steady. Water planning needs to adapt to these changes. In addition, a growing population and an increasing number of businesses also lead to a higher demand for water. This stretches the water supply even further. What does this mean for the two groups we studied? One, farmers need to know what the climate will be like from year to year. They usually rely on their past experience, but better forecasts would help farmers decide what and when to plant. They would also help farmers with long-term decisions like buying or selling land. Two, water suppliers need to plan for years ahead. Yet in Texas, the state says that water planners only have to make sure they have enough water for droughts similar to droughts in the recent past. They don't have to take future climate change into account. To start doing that, they need a lot of information about future rainfall and temperatures. They also need to know how the amount of water flowing into reservoirs or seeping down into aquifers might change. Our analysis showed that better climate information can help both farmers and water suppliers. Basing their decisions on the most severe recorded drought has been a good strategy until now, but chances are an even more severe drought is coming, and water suppliers need to plan for that. Taking future climate change into account when managing the water supply is important. Conclusion. Water is vital for life. Many global climate models show that it will keep decreasing. This is why it's very important to conserve it. Here are some things you can do. Take shorter showers, or if you're taking a bath, just fill it partway. Don't leave water running when you are not using it. Catch water from your roof when it rains, then use it to water your plants later. Or, Find out where your water comes from and how long that supply is supposed to last during a drought. Thank you for listening to this recording. Visit our website, sciencejournalforkids.org, for more free science teaching resources.